Keller Laros knows his manta rays. And you might say the mantas know him. After all, Keller's been diving with and studying these gentle giants off Hawaii's big island for 25 years. Let's see, there's uh, Milena, Lefty, Big Bertha, Olai, Curly, Ray Charles, X-Ray, one's named Stephen Colbert, Elvis, Shadow, Stephen Colbert, that would crack me up when we got that. Yes, he does know them by name. After more than a thousand dives together, to Keller, they feel like family. You get sort of a feeling with these animals when you see them all the time, and over years and years and years, you, you see the manta rays grow up. He's even recruited his own family in his manta mania. His son, Russell, often dives with him. Keller has become so synonymous with mantas on the Big Island, he's acquired a nickname. Yeah, some people call me Manta Man. Although Keller doesn't possess any superpowers, he has been able to help stop the killing of mantas with a single act. He was a huge part of getting a new law passed in Hawaii that prevents the killing or capturing of mantas. It was sort of a huge victory for us and for manta rays. It was a culmination of literally seven years worth of work on our part to, to get the manta rays protected. The Kona coast of the Big Island is a haven for these mysterious and majestic creatures. They come here to feed. We've got a very rich marine life and, and e reef ecosystem. There's a lot of plankton that lives on the, on the reef and that's what manta rays like to eat. Sometimes one or two of them come for a bite, and sometimes at night, it's a massive manta dinner party. What we found is that there's certain areas where if you put some lights on the bottom, the lights will attract plankton. The plankton just sort of, just like moths to the flame, right? They'll go to the, the light. So the manta rays realize that there's a substantial feeding opportunity for them with that plankton, because they need to eat 10 to 12% of their body weight every week. Tonight, they're lucky enough to find one of the more rambunctious ones. We've known Milena a couple of years. She's maybe eight feet across, 10 feet across. She'll probably reach over 12 feet across. Gregarious manta ray. She doesn't mind performing, doing the somersaults. And because she's young and growing, she needs a healthy diet. When the plankton is very tightly bunched together, they need to swim through it with their mouth open as often and as quickly as they can to feed on it. So the best way to do that is to rather than going back and forth is to just do somersaults, spin after spin after spin, and they get their head right through that same plankton cloud, you know, over and over and over again very quickly. But the idea isn't just to give them a nice candlelit dinner or to provide a very cool tourist attraction. There's also some very important research going on here today. Keller's goal is to help protect the mantis. They're a very, very uh, sensitive population. They have a uh, late gestation in terms of reaching sexual maturity. They don't reproduce often, maybe one pup per litter, maybe one litter every one to two years, and they don't migrate. Uh, what that means is if you're fishing for manta rays in an area and you, you substantially reduce the population, it's not going to recover, either through reproduction or through migration. And with modern mechanization and fishing techniques, they've completely wiped out manta ray populations in many parts of the world. Manta rays remain a mysterious lot, so the research involves finding out more about their life cycle. It starts by simply sizing them up. During the daylight hours, this laser harmlessly emits two fixed rays of light, which are used to measure the mantas and track their growth. Adults can be up to four meters across, the length of two large humans. We want to find out how big they are, how big they get, and how long it takes them to reach their, their mature adult size. So hopefully, by measuring manta rays when we first encounter them when they're young, and then periodically throughout their life cycle, we can see how long it takes them to grow up. Learning about how they use their habitat is done through tagging. And we have receivers mounted on the bottom of the ocean and whenever one of the manta rays with a tag swims by the receiver, the receiver picks up the information which manta ray it was and when it was there. They've found that some mantas swim nearly 100 kilometers in 24 hours before arriving back at the same feed site the next day. But to track them all, you've got to know which manta is which. And for that, Keller is seeing spots. You can tell the manta rays apart by the spots on their abdomen. Right between their gills, there's usually a really unique spot pattern. It's like their fingerprint. 
Though for Keller, he can spot a manta by more than just its spots. Sometimes they're in a rambunctious mood and they're spinning around. Sometimes they're just sort of curious and they kind of swim by. Sometimes they're completely indifferent. And other times they just sort of show off. And it's kind of neat to be able to see them day in and day out, night in and night out, and learn their personalities. Keller is out here almost every night, but he's not alone in his studies. He's recruited an entire sighting network through his website. And what that allows us to do is, is foster communication and cooperation within the community, people that are interested. If somebody saw a manta ray with a fishing hook stuck in it, then we know in the next day you take pliers and you can pull it out if you see that manta ray again. A network of spotters, public education, and a new law protecting the animals. His Manta Foundation has been a huge boost to manta rays in Hawaii. Keller Laros figures he just might be a superhero to these gentle giants after all. I think manta rays are beautiful, beautiful creatures. I certainly enjoy them. My wife, my kids, uh, my friends, and all the people that come scuba diving with me enjoy them. So hopefully that can continue for future generations.